Hello everyone, welcome to Analyze of Dawn. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are back. I've not been doing a lot of stuff recently, but there have been a lot of cool updates actually to Zero K in the last couple months since I've last cast it. Turns out it was two months ago. So yeah, hello everyone. No, I don't have the attrition marker. Shoot. One sec. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go into yields. Oops, not you. The other yield. Why is that not showing up? What the oh, it is showing up. My bad. Doi. Here I was thinking I didn't have anything up. But like, nope, we're good. We're we're good. I'm losing my mind. Okay, so three v three. This was a actually a request game. Apparently, it's a really good game. So yeah, we'll see. Psychology Tostic and Turiel Slim Psyka. Oh, I'm sorry. I just realized that. Let's call the real Slim. Because I, yeah, I realized I have some Russian viewers. Anyway, actually, I also mispronounced that. But Zenfer is along with Omoyari and uh, who's our last one? Rolmops being the opponent here. And overall, it is a relatively quick start. I mean, Inculta is not a map that works poorly in 3v3. And this is sort of map that you are going to get a very fast start. Corner starts on both sides. Not a whole lot of place to go apart from, you know, fighting your opponent because they're right in the other corner. Stands though, roll mops patrolling the skies, making sure this dart is basically stuck in the corner. Still, a lot more scouting has been done on the part of the red blue team than the red team. The blue team currently just kind of stuck here. I mean, really when you think about it, they have Sorry, the red team kind of stuck here. They they have been assaulted on all sides. They aren't really able to get a whole lot of damage done. One or two sides here or there is good. That will help, but unfortunately, information-wise, not great. Fortunately, economically speaking, they're actually doing fine, getting a lot of metal extractors, keeping themselves from being raided too heavily. Like They are getting raided hard, but the actual damage being dealt is minimal. One metal extractor does go down for a Moyari, but it does not actually make a huge difference. On the other hand, we do have Scythe coming up over here will be able to find some damage, but overall it's more important to me that, you know, how, what does it see? What has been seen? And not much. This is actually the first bit of scouting going up for the, for the Southeast team. They are not at all aware of what's actually around. At least they weren't. This scythe will certainly make a difference in that regard, and at the same time, their defenses have been quite solid. Unfortunately, their expansion has been slowed down a bit by the constant raiding. The scythe should be able to even things out a little bit, so the Southeast team maintaining their economic advantage if that quill goes down, that will be a much bigger win, and there are no defenses coming in. A couple daggers trying to deal with this, but it won't be here in time. That quill... It, no, it is in time! Just barely. The quill manages to survive, while at the same time, another Scorcher coming along in the back. Not finding a whole lot of damage. Almost getting rid of that Metal Extractor, but it's not even that big of a win if it did. So, ultimately, the Northwest team, they are actually starting to fall behind. Now that the scouting has been done and a lot of assaults are coming in from the Southeast team, it's going to be harder and harder for the Northeast, Northwest team to hold on to this. Glaive's coming along the sides, taking advantage of their suddenly increased health in this patch, but it is not going to be enough. Doesn't manage to get rid of the Metal Extractor because the Metal Extractor also has increased health this patch, so it kind of works out. Still, Glaive's coming in around here, managing to get a fair bit of damage. Northeast team, as a result, is down about 4 metal per second, but on top of that, Southeast team is just doing a fine job reclaiming, doing a fine job getting their economy going. Raiding coming in from some of the daggers is not managing to find much in the way of actual damage. So Southeast team is going to have a very difficult time with it. What the heck is this? Oh. I see. There's playing. Yeah, the Southeast team is having a hell of a time with this. Sorry. They're having... Not a hell of a time. What am I saying? They're having a great time. Managing to do a lot of damage. We should be able to get around this entire southwest section. The dagger's trying to defend, but it won't be enough. There is a Stardust being built up, but Atostic needs to prioritize that, and in, indeed is not doing so. Unfortunately, means the Glaive should be able to get in here just in time. Oh, no. The Stardust does come up. Barely, but it's not going to be enough. Nat, stop it. While Locust coming alongside. Saving one Glaive. Hero Glaives at the Southwest expansion has been completely destroyed, opening the door for Omoyari to take it instead. 
puts Southwest in a bit of an awkward position. They are managing to take the center at the meantime, though. So it's not a complete loss for them. Southeast team, they're forced to retreat from the center. That will be responded to from some flanking, but it's going to be a little hard to defend, and that does leave the Southwest open. It looks like the Northwest team is keen to retake that. At the same time, the Lokes coming in here are able to take out a couple of the Scorchers. With that, most of the Assault Force has been destroyed. Blitz is right here on defense as the Nats come on the side, providing very effective support here. Between the Nats and the Blitzes, there's a lot of EMP going down, and that is keeping Northwest from ultimately dealing a huge amount of damage, ultimately dealing enough damage to get in. This center assault, however, is proving to be quite strong. There aren't any flanking forces coming in to actually stop them. There's room to some extent. There's some map control that would allow flanking forces to position themselves along here, but like, it's like along this section here, maybe, but it, it's not happening quickly. At the same time, the daggers coming along the sides are managing to deal a significant amount of damage. That completely stuffs any attempt to expand over to the southwest. Granted, neither team has a southwest, and the southeast is currently enjoying an economic advantage, but that could change quickly as the center is being heavily damaged, and it's kind of the northwest team really taking advantage of that. Not to mention all that juicy reclaim that's not being taken by either side. At this point, Northwest team looks to be able to get in to at least disrupt things. If they swept north, I could see them doing a lot of damage. There are only light defenses over there, but unfortunately going through the center, and the Blitzes have built up along with the Reavers. I mean, well, more gunship, but basically the Nimbus, rather. Basically... There's enough area effect damage coming in here from the Southeast team that it's going to be rather difficult for them to actually get damaged. Like, it's going to be difficult for the Northwest team to do much at this point. Then for holding the North side, too. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the time to sweep North seems to have passed. Granted, there were some Stardust there that would make it difficult, but a lot of the frontline defenses are not very strong. Now, the counterattack coming in here from Oya Omoyari. Blitz is just wrecking everything at the same time. Tostic's commander forced to retreat and may not be able to do so. That Nimbus is causing a lot of problems, and that will not be able to kill the commander. Just barely 11 HP, able to jump away. It is a close call, but it's not close enough. The commander goes down regardless, revealing all the cloaked units inside of the... Well, actually, not just that, revealing the Iris, more importantly. Revealing the fact that there may be cloaked units on the field that Southeast team is going to have to deal with. And Northwest team at this point, they have... They have managed to regain some map control. Getting the Southwest once again. Omayari going down there to try to raid it out. But enough daggers are going to be there to defend it effectively. Or at least in theory, if it weren't for that, they did kind of mix up their shots. So the Blitz is able to get through regardless, but it's still... Enough of a deterrent for Omayara that they're forced to regroup. Giving Southwest a bit of extra time, but unfortunately, or the Northwest team a bit of extra time, but it's not going to be enough. At the same time, though, that Cloaked Iris coming in here, allowing these Rippers to get that range, at, or to get over their range disadvantage. Of course, the Nimbus is likely to attack, attack ground near here just to try to see if they can figure out where the heck everything is. And it doesn't even matter. The Nimbus gets destroyed completely and utterly. A couple of the Rippers get detected, though, and that actually might have been a major mistake. Now the Stardust is able to spot them. At the same time, Omoyari able to damage some of these expansions. The Commander, however, able to defend the Southwest effectively, so the Northwest team should have that on lock. They are still 30 metal per second behind, and that is a huge... or 20, rather. That is enough of a difference that if this assault goes pear-shaped, the Northwest team doesn't have much of a chance, but it looks like these Rippers are doing an amazing job managing to get in here. Might be able to get rid of this factory. We'll be able to get rid of a couple of the Caretakers. The Nimbus is causing problems, but it's just not enough of a threat. And the Ripper's able to wipe out the factory. Able to get possibly another factory on top of that. Able to get rid of the Nimbus, no problem. Ow. Very much get rid of the Nimbus. Completely gibbed that Nimbus. Same time, though, one good cloak demands another. On so We have snitches on top of sides coming in here. Able to completely wipe out this Ripper force. Gets rid of the Iris. The Rippers, however, are still in a strong position. They could get rid of this factory. But another Imp is in place. Comple or Snitch, rather, is in place. Completely shutting this down. And this last Ripper is not going to stay alive long enough. I don't, I don't know what is. The Scythe not quite able to get in position. And that destroys the command... Or that destroys the factory. So two factors of the Southeast team have been destroyed. They are going to have to basically 
Well, they're rushing a Dante. They're going to have to rebuild some factories, but rushing a Dante it is team economy, so they can at least work with that. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is still a little bit wonky. At the same time, we do have a considerable force coming in along the south side just as a follow-up. I mean, those rippers did a lot of damage. That will be able to slow down much of the assault from the southeast team. All they can really do is build the Strider and maybe upgrade their commanders. They don't have a lot of factories. On the other hand, Moyari is actually making a proxy tank factory for the south side of the map, which I believe has been spotted. Yes, it has been spotted. The northwest team is well aware of it. And just breaking the line in between, making it that much harder for any forces to get in, taking control of the south side to isolate this factory and then wipe it out. Good thinking there. It is going to be rather challenging with the Stardust to actually deal any significant damage to the factory. A lot of forces are being set up, but unfortunately these Rippers are far forward enough that the Stardust will destroy them. Defensors are not taken out yet, and it's a little bit late by the time they do. Or rather, by the time they go for it, the Stardust having enough of a range advantage that is not going to make a difference. So, these Fencers are forced back. In the loving arms of, Ripper, of Allied Rippers. But hey, the Northwest team able to take advantage of this position to get a lot of territory, managing to boost their economy up by about 10 metal per second, managing to get a strong showing when it comes to their ability to maintain control over their territory. This has been rather impressive. <laughs> People pointing out in the chat that there's apparently a, an Age of Empires 2 tournament going on. That's pretty cool. I... Oh... What's that name? I'm kind of curious what's going on there. I mean, I'm not super into Age of Empires 2, though I am curious about Age of Empires 4. Might check that out when it comes out. But... Oh, the response is about pacing. Everyone in the chat going on about how zero-case pacing is not about memorization. It's like... Fine steps come as the best. Can you just say you don't like 10 minutes of uninteractive muscle memory to kick every round off? Yeah, well... That is how RTS do. I mean... Age of Empires, yes. Much longer start time. People pointing out StarCraft 2. That's about a minute and a half. Well, actually, a minute and a half to nine minutes, depending on your build order. 0k is not much. That's very true. Also, 3v3 is even faster. The thing is, if you get into team games in this, 2v2 and 3v3, you start out with basically like 20, 30 metal per second. So you're starting out in the mid game with 3v3. And in 1v1, it's already starting out fast. And 3v3, like you're. Like, this is late game, 12 minutes into the game. Actually, it's not in late game. Southeast team looks to be very much about to destroy, lose their factory, losing the Romov's commander, losing the gunship plant. The Dante is trying to defend, but it's simply not fast enough to actually deal any significant damage in time. Second Dante does go down before anything takes that out, and now that Strider Hub is about all that's left on the southeast side when it comes to production. There is still this pro proxy tank factory trying to do what it can to set up a strong offense, but Northwest team... Setting up a lot of stack defenses over to the southwest to deal with that. And at the same time, the rest of this assault force from the northwest team is wiping everything out. So I'm not entirely sure how we're going to be able to see this play out in a way that's not just northwest team crushing southeast. It's There is this, this north section of the southeast team. They do still have 50 metal per second coming in, so they're not done. And the Dante at least is able to stop some reinforcements from approaching, from helping out, which is going to completely solidify this defense. Granted, it's a little bit late. I mean, a lot has been lost. At this point, Roll Mobs is essentially a non-entity in this game. Omoyari effectively only has a proxy base to the south. Zenfer is the primary player in this, on the southeast team that's actually managed to maintain any of their assets. For now, though, Zenfer does have the Dante. They do have a lot of stack defenses. They do have enough to hold off, and at the same time, there's that proxy tank factory coming in, a Moyari with a dozen blitzes, doing a fair bit of work to distract the reinforcement forces that would have been coming into the rest of Southeast base. It's a little bit tricky for this to be assaulted. This position is highly defensible. There's a hill over the top. Most of the enemies are vehicle-based, so getting over that's going to be tricky. On top of the fact that there's the Stardust and the Gauss turrets just providing that much more defense. All raised as well, as I point out. They are quite high up on the ground. So they are going to be effective at stopping basically anything from coming in and dealing with significant damage, while at the same time, the Dante coming in along the side, flanking these reinforcement forces, wrecking a lot of the Northwest Army. And his Blitz has managed to keep themselves alive, <laughs> and Zen for not sure about whether or not to resign here, having taken a lot of damage over the northwest or Northeast at the same time, losing some Stardusts. 
trying this Nimbus around here, but this Ripper is doing an amazing job. And he had another Iris coming in here. Iris Ripper combo. I mean, this thing, Iris, Iris Riot combo is a very strong combo just because you can't really spot it easily until it gets close. Unless you are like putting a bunch of snitches or whatever on the ground. You can't spot until it gets close, and it completely nullifies the disadvantage that riots have, which is range, or lack thereof. But when riots can just roll up without any concern in the world until they get in their own preferred range, well, they're going to wreck everything. And that's exactly what we're seeing with these rippers. Zen for now losing the northeast quite significantly, but at the same time, Oyari is managing to hold the southwest. So, while Zenfer has lost a lot of energy, or rather, the team has lost a lot of energy on Zenfer's pro and all the stuff Zenfer had, the medal for Southeast is... I mean, they could reclaim their way back into a reasonable position. And with this artillery fight over to the Southwest, it's actually looking like there's a little sliver of hope here. The Southeast team might be able to tear apart all this stuff over here. And with that, Moyari could bring the Southeast team back into the game. The medal per second, thanks to the reclaim, is about even. And there is a lot of reclaim. I should point out here that on the side, a safe reclaim, six, almost 7,000 medal worth of safe reclaim for the Southeast side. They are going to be fine. Like, they could be running 150 medal per second for, like, two minutes with that much reclaim. That'd be plenty of time to rebuild their entire army. Like, they could... Like, that much metal? Like, this, they could triple the size of this army right here, and it's already doing a reasonably okay job. It's getting... It's starting to get a little pushed. Blitzes are heavily damaged, but... If you triple the size of the army, that would completely change everything. Not to mention the rest of the glaives coming over here on top of the snitch is able to get rid of these rippers or at least heavily damage them. There are plenty of rippers left and that will be enough to stop these glaives from getting too far in. But the important target is the iris and that will go down. Southeast team no longer has to worry about that cloaking. They should retreat. Why, Zenfer, why are you not retreating these glaives? They're, you cannot win this fight. Get the glaives out of here. And they must have not been paying attention. They must have been looking elsewhere and the glaives went on their own. Because there's no reason you'd be sending glaives in after that point. The iris is dead. Pull back. Save the glaives for elsewhere. Don't go in for the attack against the Riots. Speaking of, though, the Riots doing a great job against the Emissary. The Stardust finally stopping it, but Amoyari's entire force was destroyed, leaving this wide open. The Stardust being really the only only speed bump that the Northwest team would have taken out this, this proxy base from Amoyari, but it may not matter. Half of the Knights on top of Adante over to the north side of the map are making it very clear to the Northwest team that they cannot ignore Zenfer despite the amount of damage that has been dealt. Not to mention the ticks, or the imps. I mean, well, they were called ticks. The imps. Oh, right. Snitches are roaches. Gah. Not to mention the imps coming in. Not snitches. Snitches are the shieldbot factory explosive burrowing bug thing. Imps are the EMP one for the cloakies. But yeah, imps. Just wrecking face. Not sure. Why aren't you attacking in here? Okay, I guess better accuracy, but that is a lot of dead Ronin. That could have been fight moved. Sorry, I'm being overly critical Zen for here. They're they're managing to hold on quite well, considering everything. And actually, this like I said, this is all forced over to the north. Well, okay, what's left of it? I mean, they got rid of a commander, got rid of a fair bit of the economy over here. The Dante mostly operating on defense, and that is fine. That is getting rid of these rippers, and that's the key threat right now. Is all these rippers coming in here from a tostic? They are wrecking everything. So, with that, Iris coming in here. Zenfer with the Iris Revenge. Iris on Knight. Same concept, really. Although Knights have a much better optimal range than Riots, but still. Similar concept. Get oh, no, it's not even Iris. It's Conjurer. My bad. I'm thinking, wait, that's a really small shield for an Iris. Yo, Conjurer's a very cloak now. That's right. That is a thing. May not matter though. Zenfer is coming in a lot more hot with coming in a lot harder with these sides. They are not really doing a lot with the knights anymore, but the sides are doing an amazing job. Unfortunately, their commander has been destroyed in the pro. Their commander has been or not the commander. Their Dante rather has been destroyed in the process. But the southeast team still has plenty of reclaim that's completely free. Rollmop's getting a cloakbot factory to supplement Zenfer's. I'm not entirely sure why. 
It's a bit of an odd choice. At the same time, the tank factory over here has been wiped out for Omayari. So they're going to need to rebuild elsewhere. Granted, that tank factory did a lot of work. That, I would say, saved the Southeast team overall because it made the Northwest team have to pull forces away from their assault path in order to defend the Southwest side, which gave the Southeast team time to rebuild all these metal extractors and get a bunch of reclaim, rebuild their army, and ultimately bought Southeast the time they needed to even this game out again. Because now we're even again. Now it's you know, 20 minutes into the game. It's gone back and forth quite heavily, but the Southeast team went from like 40 metal per second back up to 70, back up to even, from a 30 metal deficit. So yeah, Omoyari's gambit here absolutely paid off. That Southeast team now in a strong position. There's the Iris coming in with, it, with the Knights. A little bit tricky. The Fencer knows where to shoot, but with it gone... It's going to be a complete mystery where to go. Now it's just Iris v. Iris. Both sides going for the Irises. Just waiting on this. Like, who's going to attack first? No one really knows the other one's right there. Actually, that might, that might not be true. That might not be true. Radar is here. No, Radar is absolutely here. So, there is no... Not enough Radar coming in from the Southwest, actually. They have no idea of things going in and out of this cloak bubble, whereas the Northwest team absolutely knows that there's clo cloaked units here, or if they don't know already, they'll find out very shortly. Cloak bubbles interacting, and both sides decide to go for... No. No, we're seeing, actually, Atostic go in. Zen for going for the tree, Atostic going in, though, makes sense given the types of units. The Imp being the main target of that retreat, opening Atostic up completely. And again, brilliant use of Imps, the other thing that's been keeping the Southeast team in the game. Completely wiping out these Rippers. That is really what you gotta do in this cloaky light vehicle or cloaky rover matchup is imps, imps followed by some kind of follow force, any kind of follow force. Ronan are the best against the rippers, but really anything will do as long as they're stunned. And Amoy Yadri getting another tank foundry up. They are getting themselves in a very strong position to basically close out the match potentially. I mean, we do have gunships coming on the north side as well, and the northwest team with their actually rather massive stacks of reclaim, it turns out. Yeah, over here, Omoyari's entire old base is a massive attack of reclaim going plus 45, as is the Southeast team. And again, again, both sides have a lot of reclaim to work with. Turning that into a paladin over the Southeast side, turning it into a gunship army over the Northwest side. The Northwest side looks to be primarily focusing on getting those locusts built up. I don't see anything else significant. No striders. We're seeing more hovers coming in. Basically, just increased production. Northwest team going for a large numbers advantage. Southeast team going for a single paladin that would be able to potentially wipe out the entire force used properly. Same time though, Zenfer just coming in with a lot of size. Disrupting his entire army. Getting rid of a lance. That was a very high value target to get rid of. On top of that, the knights coming in here over the center. Getting rid of this mace. Getting rid of these daggers. Opening up the center. There's actually not much in the way of defenses beyond that. There's some static defenses, but they're not going to do much against cloaked knights. That is... Very strong. At the same time, the Owl coming in from Atostic being wiped out along with the Bombers. They do manage to get rid of this the fusion plant over in the ground, but it's, thankfully for, this, for the rest of Zenfer's base, a bit too far in the ground to deal enough damage. I mean, Blast Radius was significant, but it just wasn't enough. If you look at the Blast Radius here, it's 2400 damage, but considering that's quite far away... I'm pretty sure it's spherical. It's clearly spherical, considering how the explosion in the bottom didn't do a significant amount of damage to the units nearby. Certainly not 2400. Now it looks like Southeast team is running into a little bit of trouble. Unfortunately, because they are investing a huge amount of resources into that Paladin... Or never mind, they were investing a lot of resources into the Paladin, and they no longer are investing more to Chainsaw. I mean... That is a lot of resources that's not going into direct anti-air, that's not going into protecting that Iris, which has just been destroyed for the Southeast team. And going for a Dante as well. So South the Southeast team is going for a single strong punch through the center of the Northwest team's lines, while the Northwest team is looking to overwhelm on all sides. But having a difficult time doing that because the Southeast team is doing an amazing job, Zenfer in particular is doing an amazing job with these sides, keeping the army disrupted. Top of that, the Gremlins getting rid of two Ravens, potentially three, uh, not quite... Not quite three, but forcing the third one back. Massively reducing the amount of damage that can be dealt. Does target a Conjurer. Good choice of target there. If they can find another Conjurer, that'd be worth a lot. Though, admittedly, they could go for some of these Metal Extractors. Despite the Metal Extractor HP buff, Metal Extractors still get one shot by Ravens. And another Conjurer goes down. I like it. 
Get rid of those frontline constructors. That will slow down the expansion efforts for the Southeast team and actually puts them quite a bit behind in terms of metal. They have reclaimed all the metal in their base. The 7,000 metal I was talking about, that's been taken. That's gone. There's a lot in the this no man's land section, but that's no man's land. Which admittedly, Atostic and and Real Slim are taking full advantage of. I said this before, like, don't don't sweat reclaiming the, the stuff in the center. Like, honestly, I would say that the Southeast team has more control of this. The Knights over to the north basically have this entire section completely taken. The Tremor's doing a fine job providing a bit of area denial. Knights over to the south as well don't really have much of a counter. But, that being said, and yeah, Ketabor pointing out, they don't really see Southeast team making much of a comeback. And yeah, Southeast team is definitely running into some difficult problems. They, they are relying on this Dante. The Southeast team needs to make a lot of value off that Dante. Now, granted, one thing to point out here is that there's not a lot of mobile forces for the Northwest team. There's, again, another Irish shot. There's the Lotus, there's Locusts, and there's the Irish Rippers. That's it. The Knights are doing a reasonably good job against the Irish, Irish Rippers. The Gremlins aren't managing to do as well against the Locusts, and that will likely be the problem. But then the Locusts are going to run into the Stardust. The Nats are going to get are going to try to stun at the Stardust, but they're getting distracted by the Razor, and that actually is going to be a huge blow. Stardust, however, does get does get stunned out, but all the Nats are gone. Major support force here for the Locusts. Now Zen for losing a lot of their economy to the Northeast, but the question is whether or not that matters. The reclaim field has been claimed here. Unfortunately, not a whole lot has been done with that. Terraforming looks like a ah, caretaker to take the reclaim. That makes sense. Put the caretaker in the hole. Same time, the locusts are kind of getting slowed down here. The Ripper's looking to find some other opportunity. And it's worth noting, no imps are in the ground. So there's actually a pretty good opportunity to come in here. The Dante, however, is coming in for that attack. And they do see it. There's a cloaked Dante too, by the way. So this Ripper's are being spotted out. All of them is going to get spotted out. There is nothing to hide. The fact that there's an iris here also gets spotted out. Good use of the D-gun to find that iris. Put it on fire. Keep it from cloaking for a while thanks to it being on fire and taking damage. At the same time, though, Moyari is running a lot of forces in, kind of feeding metal over to the northwest side. So, southeast team, they are still running in a bit of a deficit. They are managing to get enough reclaim that it may not be a big problem. But again, this Dante is the key thing. It's finding a lot of value. Doing a fair bit of damage. But the question is whether or not I can do enough. Also, to be fair though, these glaives are doing a fine job getting rid of some of the workers. Like, the masons are going down. The constructors are just not there. And that means there's no reclaim, which means the Northwest team is going to have a... I mean, they still have a lot of reclaim. They're going to have a hard time like pushing into this field of reclaim, but it's more a matter of maintaining that position for the Southeast team rather than denying one for the Northwest. At the same time, the Dante is going around the... Flying around the North side. Trying to find something not going straight for an attack. The Glaives instead are going for the attack. They should be able to get a significant amount of information, which is still good. But the Southeast team, they need to turn that into territory destruction. They need to turn that into an advantage that will actually lead to a proper victory. Because right now, good job raiding up the Southwest side. I like that. Gets rid of a lot of metal extractors. Gets rid of a lot of defenses. Opens a flanking path potentially. And there's not a lot of defenses here to stop it. I mean, the daggers are doing a fine job, but the glaives, unfortunately, just simply don't have the damage output for it to matter, so... Yeah, the daggers are doing amazing here. Like, they got rid of that. Same time, though, the gunships are wiped out. The locust swarm is completely destroyed over the south side of the map. That is a massive opening. That chainsaw paying off considerably as all the locusts get destroyed. Now, with that in mind, there are still... There are still advantages over the Northwest team. They still have the territory advantage. They still have a static economy advantage. And a pretty significant one at that. This Dante, I wouldn't say, has really made cost yet. It's done some good job of defense. Zenfer is now going to rebuild over here, get get all these metal extractors back, get some reclaim, which is nice. But the Dante needs to be dealing with significant damage. And right now is a good time to do that. At least in theory, a lot of, wow, a lot of owls. Not sure why there's so many owls here. That is... That's too many. Only a couple ravens on top of that. Although Aliko. They find the Dante. That is going to be you know, two or three waves. I mean, the Dante is still... It still has 11,000 HP. It's not going to go down quickly. Ooh, and the Merlin almost nails that Iris. If there's any splash damage in that attack, it would have completely revealed it. Still, there's Aliko coming in here. 
Splash damage doesn't reveal the Iris, but it reveals basically everything else, but at the same time, those knights wiping out the entirety of that air force. Coleco, the only survivor of that assault. Coming around for another shot, though. I mean, the Dante is revealing itself, and it only has like two or three hits more, and I think this splash will reveal the Iris. No, not quite. Iris is still far enough away, it doesn't matter. But honestly, it's kind of irrelevant that Dante has been revealed. I mean, Northwest team knows exactly where it is. And the Ripper's coming in here to try to destroy it. Having a bit of trouble with the Phantom. The question is, how much is that going to matter? See, the thing is, there's all these fleas here. And those, the point of these fleas is so that the Iris forces cannot come through. Because as soon as they cut, get near any of the fleas, both reveal themselves. But the fleas are going to get in the way of the Iris well before the Iris spots them. Or well before any other unit spot them. I mean... Or at least spots the group of cloaked units. And that's the important thing. As long as the group of cloaked units is spotted, then it's no longer as big of a threat. That being said, the Northwest team doesn't really have a whole lot of follow-up forces. They're investing so much into fleas. I mean, you think, okay, fleas are quite cheap. It's not a big deal, but... What are they investing in? They got a Strider Hub, they got Nats, they have gunships coming up. They don't have a lot of el they have a lot else actually coming in in terms of real damage. At the same time, that Paladin has been built. Zenfer not actually using it, but if that Paladin goes in the front lines, the Southeast team could easily turn this around. Uh, so, people in the chat wondering, why is this game still going on? Well, I'm actually not Sure. I mean, okay, a part of it was that Moyadri stopped some stuff, but that was, that was 10 minutes ago. So it's hard to say, although, oh, yeah, North does have nuke. Three seconds away from that nuke, too. And there's no anti-nuke on the other side. So it's going to be tricky. I mean, the Paladin is up, but again, I think the main reason is just that a lot of forces along the sides have been dealing some damage, but it just... It's not really as so much pork. I mean, if you look at the pork, it's not huge, really, compared to the units that are coming in. It's more just that the Southeast team isn't doing a good enough job stalling and a great job reclaiming with mobile units. Not even with stag defenses, just with the Knights, with the Dante, with the Paladin. But now there is Nuke. Now we have Shiny. Though I'm a little surprised we didn't see... You know what I'm surprised we didn't see? Is Infernos. Tactical nuke silo with Infernos. Because that's another thing that stops irises. Is just, if you burn them out, they don't do anything. But, yeah. Shiny gets rid of Zen for his base. Really not actually where a lot of the production is, though. Most of the production is in the back line. But Zenfer having lost that front line position is... It's tricky, but now... Southeast team going for a counterattack... Lico's coming in here to do some damage. It looks reasonably... I mean, it may not be enough. Honestly, I don't see what they have to lose. And I don't think Zenfer does either. I should point out that Paladin... Oh, I think the Paladin... There it is. No, it's the Dante. Where's the Paladin? Did the Paladin get nuked? I think the Paladin might have gotten nuked. I didn't spot that. That being said, the counterattack coming in here is doing a significant job. I mean, all of these forces, all the the Minotaurs coming in should be able to get rid of most. Ah, there's the Paladin, my bad. Should be able to get rid of most of the fleas. I mean, the Paladin is certainly doing a reasonable job of getting rid of them, which means that the cloaked forces have a much easier time getting around because the fleas are all gone. So this counter assault might actually work. I'm a bit surprised it didn't happen sooner, but yeah, Southeast team just maintaining their army. That's what we're going to look at after when the game's done, is what the army value is. Because I feel like the biggest reason this game didn't go sooner is because while a lot of damage is up on the northwest, northwest team to the economy, especially over to the northeast, the southeast team maintained their army reasonably well. Like they didn't lose units, or at least they got a lot of value off the units. I mean, if you're looking at attrition, southeast team, I mean, grant, granted right now it's obviously a strong advantage for them, but they've been even or winning on attrition... Like, you don't win 10,000 attrition that quickly. Southeast team has been ahead on attrition this entire time. I think that's the biggest thing, is that Zenfer in particular and Omayari with some of their distraction plays have been doing a great job of just keeping everything alive. I mean, Rollmups managed to recover, but they got completely wiped out, unfortunately, early on. But basically, this seems like it just came down to 
solid attrition. Solid use of attrition, solid use of mobile forces. I'm only already had a strong setup with pork over the southwest early in the game, but that that was again more about buying time for Southeast team to set up for this. Going in for the kill, and that that looks to be game. Northwest team throws in the towel, and that is it. I'm curious. Okay, so team wise, metal used dead even. Metal income fairly even. Metal produced about the same. Metal excess also pretty even. Reclaim strong over the southeast team. No surprise there. Overdrive strong over the northwest team. Again, no surprise there. They basically didn't lose their economy until the very end. What was the army value, though? Oh, so the northwest team actually did a really strong job when it came to army value. But value killed? Oh, my bad. Okay, no. The value... Wow. So the northwest team actually won on value. What was the defense value? Southeast... Okay. All right, I'll take chat's point for it. There was there was a lot of static defense in the Southwest team. The army value was not quite as strong. Up until the very, very end of the game, like the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, earlier on, I think, you know, it was pushing where they could. But yeah, those Rippers were doing a lot of work for the Northwest team. Yeah, the numbers don't really show it, honestly. It... Watching it, it seemed like a lot of it was Zen for basically coming in, countering as the damage was dealt. Oh, right, because value killed counts metal extractors, doesn't count other units. It's not quite the same thing. So you see, the fluctuations in economy value were huge. Fluc Army value didn't fluctuate as much, but again, it was... Like, that's where the first Dante died. Yeah, it was... Okay, Kedavor pointing out that the top, the Northwest is kind of throwing. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm thinking, this, these numbers don't line up. The Southeast team, I mean, they had this well, one last shot, Hail Mary pass, but that was stronger than I expected. Because, yeah, the Northwest team, it didn't feel like they were building a lot. I mean, they had the nukes out of the wall, obviously, there was a lot of their money. Didn't feel like they were building a lot. Granted, both teams were quite even when it came to actual value, when it came to their economy at all times. So... It was more a matter of where they chose to spend it, and it felt like Northwest chose to spend it on the nuke, which, while strong, prompted the counterattack. And also, the fact that they didn't really have a lot of counterforces that weren't getting wiped out. Near the end of the game, especially, it just, yeah, it ended up working out a massive advantage for Southeast. Huge spike in production near the end, where the metal extractor was being, or metal... Sil or missile silo was being produced. Well, anyway, that was that. So we are going to have another match. It is going to be a 1v1. And it is going to be a match between Atostic. Again, we are going to see more Atostic. And it is going to be Atostic versus Rue Dr. Fee. I guess Ruderfi. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but it'll it'll be on screen in a sec. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be back in a couple minutes.